Oh, we'll continue the series of picture. This is the third talk. Thank you. In this lecture, I will talk about the very poor and previous that I mentioned in the last lecture. The so called fields. Here and then we can also look at application. Certain uh, properties of Turing devices. So uh, up to now I haven't say, said anything about the current theorem. I'm hoping that you say something at the end of the lecture. Uh, but it has seen quite similar. Okay, so let me start with a very general remark. So usual elastic can be an algebraically closed field, the characteristic that I do is P and the part. So the remark is uh, suppose that that X is a projecting variety over K and suppose that L is a B Cartier device. <coughs> so I hope that you remember what B means. So essentially it means that if you look at the sections of M times L, this goes grows very fast. So it grows like M to the dimension of the variety. So in other words, it, it's similar to an ample line model. It has a lot of sections where we take large parts. Okay, now suppose that we have Subset and assume that this is not equal to x itself. So then I can consider the, the following uh, sequence. So we have uh, we have the ideal shape of S, and then we have four X. very basic exact sequence which is associated with this closed subset. Now I can tensor this exact sequence with my big Cartier divisor. So we get IS ML and then we have 4X ML and then 4 So we get an exact sequence. Before we just tensor the M down. Now if I look at the exact sequence on the sections, then what we get is something like this. You have the sections of I S and L, and then you have sections of O S M L, and then you have sections. Now, so the dimension here, the dimension here, the dimension of this space is, is quite large when m goes to infinity. But here you have s, which is smaller, it has smaller dimension, so it, this can grow at most. Like m to the dimension of s. And the dimension of s is Pretty small than the dimension of x. So in other words, you could have a lot of sections here that cannot, they cannot all injectively go to give the sections of s. Because this will, when m goes to infinity, this will be much smaller than this. So in other words, you will have a lot of these sections living in this space. So I would say that Therefore, the dimension of this space also grows very large. When 
run the image. But anyway, so I'm not really looking for so many distinctions. What I'm looking at is actually the fact that you can always find sections of ML which vanish from this little set. So for M sufficiently large, there are always a lot of sections. ML which is vanish on this close end. Okay, this will be just a very general remark and we will see some of why I'm interested in this kind of thing. Now we come to the statement of Chill's theory. So actually I gave you this word in the previous lecture, but I'm going to repeat it again. So here now we have a projective scheme. It's not even a variety of projective scheme over K, and we have L and F Cartier divide. So remember that NEF is so my positive. Condition. It's a section with any curve, it's not negative. Then the theorem says that L is semi ample. So remember, semi ample means that some multiple is free. If and only if restriction of L to the exception of set is So in other words, if some multiple of L is free, of course restriction will be free. But the important thing is that if some multiple of L restricted to this closed set is free, then you can lift it to freeness into the whole space. So this set in many cases it would be much smaller than the whole spec. It would really something very useful, but you can lift this free and this global generation from this maybe small closed set to the whole spec. And maybe I'll also quickly remind you that this set is the union of all the integral sub schemes such that L is treated to be if not B. So in the last lecture, I already gave you applications of this theorem in the case of service. We already know why it is very important in the case of services I discussed, but I'll also tell you in the for triple you can use this kind of statements. And I also maybe should again remind you that this is actually not true of the complex numbers. So this is something really amazing just happens in part of the so let's see how the proof works. So if L is semi-ample, then obviously the restriction is also semi-ample. So we can concentrate on the other direction. So now assume that restriction L to the exceptional set is my ample, then we can lift this to the whole set. And it's also, you will see during the proof that it's also really very important to allow schemes, not only variety. It will give you a certain degree of flexibility that makes the whole thing very simple. Okay. So L restricted to exceptional set is my ample, then we should show that L is my ample with the total space. Now we can make some simplifications. We can assume by lecture one, we can assume that A 
makes it reduced. And remember that this is just uh, applying for billions. If it is not reduced, you can use for billions to, to reduce the whole thing to the reduced case when you don't have any to reduce structures. So let me also remark here that very quickly that the proof that I'm following here actually is not, not exactly a killed original proof to follow Kashini so this is at least slightly different from Kiel's proof, but actually Kiel's proof has some advantages that this proof cannot be. But this is in a way much simpler to state. Okay, so we can assume that x is reduced. Now let me consider one special case. Suppose that that if I restrict L to any component of of N, so then this is a big device. So we just focus on this case, but later I will tell you the more general situation. So suppose that if you take any component, you restrict your device, that it will give you a big device. Okay. Now, pick any component, let's say x prime of x, and then let x double prime to be equal to the union of the other components. So we might have many components here, I just pick one component x prime and call the rest now, by using notary transaction, so we may assume that the theorem already holds for any proper closed substance. So if we go on any proper closed subset, something we already know we have some ample So I can use that to do some kind of induction. Okay. Now by another kind of induction, by so induction on the number of components. We may assume that we may assume the following thing. So I can say that there is some section, let's say alpha prime, to the section of L is greater to x prime. So I restrict L to one <coughs> component, I pick one section, and I also pick another section alpha double prime in L to zero L restricted to the union of the other component. Of course, the union may not be irreducible, but because I'm doing induction of the number of components, I can assume I already know what it is. So what do I need from, from this section is the following thing, such that I want them to be actually non-zero, I want their restriction The intersection of x prime and x double prime will be simply equal to zero. So I choose section one here, I choose another section on the rest. And in this picture, the intersection is just x prime, intersection x double prime. In this picture, it's just a point, but the point in general would be quite complicated. But what can I do is that I can take a section which does not vanish at that point. Actually, we need to take some more. 
So the section itself will not vanish on the whole variety of the whole component, but I want it to vanish at this point. And how I can do this exactly by the remark at the beginning. Because I can have so many sections, I can always assume that some will vanish in this closed set. And by doing induction on the number of components, I can assume the same holes for, for alpha double prime.
So it, it will define a closed subscheme, but beta is given by this one section. It's locally defined by one equation. It's actually just a Cartesian divide. So it defines an effective Cartesian divide. So you can think about the D also just as the, as the zero locus of this section, which you are more familiar with. D is just the zero scheme of the section of and So I actually made, I missed one point, I should change this a little bit. So what I want is, not the L itself exactly, I want to remove some ample device. So you can say the ample is a new, very ample. So we have to change it all. So here you replace ML always by ML minus A. Minus A. Minus A. Minus A. Minus A. Minus A. Anytime 
So this is just a restriction to this subscript n times t. And uh, it's important to take some multiple of t, not the itself of the following grid. So since I know that L is m times L is linearly equivalent to a plus t, then I know that n times m L linear to n times a plus n times t. Yeah, actually, it doesn't matter. For real life, let me also put it again. Now, we can focus on this divide, the n times m l minus n t. So from here, you see that m and l minus n t is the same as n times a. And if I take the n to be very large, then I get a very, very ample, sufficiently ample divider that I can kill many things using this divide. So if n is sufficiently large, then by the so-called cell vanishing, we know that H1 of OX N and L minus NT actually vanishes. Just because you don't have some multiple of it, I'm to divide this. The multiple is large enough to kill both of multiple. But now there is also something really amazing which happens is that there is a theorem by Fujita. <coughs> so Fujita vanishing essentially says that the cell vanishing still true even if you multiply a negative device. So we also have the following vanishing. H1 of OX, if I throw in a, a multiple of this divide or any other Cartier next divide then I can say that this is equal to C. So of course here I am assuming any again that any is large enough. You know. But the thing is that the L does not depend on the N. You can take L to be a larger part or any any non negative <coughs> So if I add also L times L in this exact sequence, then I can still say that H1 here vanishes. Therefore, we <coughs> get the exact sequence which reads as follows. We have the sections of L times L plus n times ml minus n times on x we have restriction uh, or n times t l times l plus n m l and then finally we have h1 of this divide l times l plus n m l minus but I, as I told you this is equal to c so this means that you can actually lift sections from this closed subscript. You can just fix the N, but you can take the L to be quite large. So you can lift sections from this N times T, and then that means that you can essentially lift some I am. So since L is restricted to T and any multiple of this, Divide that is semi ample. We can lift the semi ample to the whole space. And therefore, L is semi ample on the total. So the whole idea is really inside this exact sequence. You can essentially apply this self-vanishing, and even if you add some nerve devices, it doesn't really matter. 
So we will get a vanishing here, and then you can leave section from n times t. So you, you see also that this does not work over complex numbers, because when you replace the d with some multiple of t, you cannot lift some ampleness on d to some multiple. This happens all only over the fields of positive characteristics. So in a sense, it's really the main idea. The rest is just by some general technicality. It's Fujita's theory in post uh, over complex number. Sorry, but Fujita, the theory of Fujita. Yeah, yeah, the Fujita theory of Fujita. So, so is where is the part you use? Yeah, so here the exactly where I use the characteristic. So, you see that by induction we know L restricted to this amount, so, uh, so this implies restriction for any multiple of but it does not just hold over complex numbers. So this is exactly the advantage of this positive characteristic is that when you when you think and that's your only part. That's essentially the only part. Actually you can also formulate something similar over complex numbers, but then you cannot take this exceptional set with a reduced structure. You might have to put the very large down reduced structure, but still you can prove that. But in practice, it's useless because once you put these numbers, these structures, then you, you just don't know how to do induction, how to prove that L was equal to this exceptional set, but with some maybe very high multiplicity is semi ample. Okay, so let's look at the rest of the proof. So I essentially I proved the theorem when L is restricted to every component is big. But we still have one case left. So now assume L restricted to some component of X is not big. Okay, now let X prime to be the, the union of all such components. And as usual, well, let me change the notation. Let's call this y. And let's take y that we find to be the rest of the So in other words, if I restrict L to any component of y prime, it is big. It is not big. If I restrict L to any component of y double prime, it is big. So I just make this. So you, you see that uh, if this y double prime is empty, then the theorem holds trivial. So the theorem is essentially empty, doesn't really tell you anything. That's because in this case, PL will be just equal to y prime equal to the whole. So the theorem actually doesn't say anything. It says L restricted to X is on my ample, then L is on my So we could assume that this is non empty. So again, we go through similar tricks. We want to have se certain sections on Y prime, we want to have certain sections on Y double prime, and we want to be lifted to the whole space. But this goes through one, maybe a little confusing, trick. Okay. So what I do is similar to the case of big divisors, I take Prime, and I also take another section on the other side. There is 
beta level prime, section of n times L minus A restricted to Y double prime. Now, big L restricted to any component of Y prime is not big. When you take minus A, then you should not have any section here. You not expect any. So it will be just, actually just zero. So this section will be zero, but on the other side, I want something non zero. Such that beta prime restricted to the intersection is the same as beta double prime restricted to the intersection. But I don't want beta double prime to vanish for any component. And such that beta double prime does not vanish on any component of y double prime. So you can glue these two together. You will get a section which vanishes on y prime, but not on y double prime. So we get beta of the section of ML minus A such that its restriction to y prime is just Beta prime is just zero and so it's section to y double prime y double prime. And uh, as I said, beta double prime does not vanish. Sorry, beta does not vanish on any component of y double prime. Now Again, because the scheme is reduced and so on, we can, well, even if it is not reduced, you can always define the zero locus of this section. So let set inside x be the zero subscheme of b. So you can think of it exactly as before. This morphism is so the big I give the morphism from O x to O m l minus a, and then you multiply with minus l plus a, and so on. So you, you can think of it in the same way, or you could just imagine that where this beta vanishes will be the point results. Okay, so we have this closed subscheme, and by, by construction, the beta actually vanishes on every component of y prime, so by assumption, by construction, y prime itself is inside this set. So what would happen is that you have, let's say, y prime is something like this, and y double prime is here, you get a close up in set, so it will will contain the y prime already, but maybe some other correlator of sub varieties inside y double prime. But the thing is that it will be a strictly smaller subscheme compared to x itself. So again, as before, we also know that, that the exceptional set of L is inside the set. So by induction then, We know that L restricted to that is already semi up. And then I need to lift this semi to the whole space. So we already really use that. some elementary right here. Yeah, there is not nothing. Okay, so we know that L restricted to Z is semi-ample, then let's take, uh, we take some section, let's say, gamma of L restricted to Z, or some of M, M. Well, I already used M, so let me take some T times L restricted to Z. So because y prime is inside the set already, then I can restrict this to y prime, so I will get the section here. 
So let gamma phi to be the section of gamma to apply phi. Now, the crucial point is that when you intersect Z with Y double prime, you actually get an effect of the device. Because again, this is just defined by a vanishing of some sections. Let's say M inside Y double prime. So I have an effective cardiac device. Now anyway, it's a closed sub scheme. I can also restrict the section with this closed sub scheme. So now the, the main point here is that when I restrict this gamma to this closed set, so here I may need some hope to multiply n by m, then this can be lifted. So maybe you have to take a lot more. So this is exactly as the step before. You have a section you re restrict it to this kind of device, but and then you can essentially, maybe after some multiple, you can leave this section to any, essentially any multiple of the cardinal line. So here actually we would probably need to take some, some part of this. So let's take, let's say yes. So you see that the M is inside N times M. You already have a section of the gamma here. In order to lift it to a section of n times m, you probably have to take some large power of this guy. And usually this, this gamma s, the s itself will be some power of p, p So I can lift this section maybe up to this multiple. But on the other hand, I can choose the n so that any section on n times m can be, that by the vanishing that I discussed, can be lifted to the whole. Y double prime. So by the vanishing theorem that I discussed, if n is sufficiently large, we can leave the section gamma as the whole space. Anyway, the important thing is that now I have something on y prime, I also have something on y double prime, I can glue them together and get something of the whole space. So now we can glue, uh, let, let me call this, maybe it's not such a good notation, but anyway, gamma on double prime inside this space, then we can, we can glue gamma double prime and gamma prime to the S. So as I said, it's not a very good notation, but anyway. You will have now two sections on each side of this, of this union. On the intersection, they agree so that they can lead to a section of the total space. So let's call this again by a few of notation. I already used gamma, so let's call it lump. So you will get a section of S times L on the whole space. Okay, finally then you can just notice that. So as I said, since L was treated to set in semi-ample, And since L itself is globally generated outside set, so 
Ah, molte cose. Then you can say that. In other words, there is 
differentiating scheme. And C prime defined over A prime and L prime defined over K prime such that X and L are obtained by extension. Okay. So it's enough to show that the L prime here is the total line. But again, as I said, L prime you can consider it as a, as a point inside P zero X prime. Now, the, the whole point is that <coughs> this space here, P zero X prime, is a finite type of the base field. Therefore, it can have only finite many rational points of it. But one of these rational points is exactly L prime itself. So you have a finite set of points. This finite set of points is in a group. And L prime is, is one element there. So you will have a, a line with an element of some finite group. And of course, you can take a large enough group. So therefore, L prime or any other. The relation to the line model defined over this finite subfield will be going to be torsion. So the end then shows that they are So we can use this very nice property here to give examples and also to some more theorems and scribbles. And over more general fields, the story will be actually much more complicated. So let me give you first one example. Now suppose that S is a projective surface. So we just projective variety of dimension two over k again is the right closer. And as usual, suppose that L is a crafty device. And let's take it to be net. And net crafty device. Now, if L is numerically trivial, then as I just told you, L is actually good. Now, assume that L is B. Then, in fact, I get L is going to be somewhere else. And this property is, oh, this is something which happens only over finite fields. If you take other kinds of fields of complex numbers, this will fail. And in this case, why this is semi ample? Well, because L is B. So we can see that the exceptional of L is, is strictly smaller than X itself. Therefore, if L is just empty or it has dimension one. So every component will be dimension one. Now, if any L is empty, then this just means that L is actually empty. But if 
dimensional VL is equal to 1, then L restricted to every component of L of this VL is numerically trivial, so L restricted to the exceptional set is numerically trivial by the reminder that I told you this actually is actually semi-ample. So these are for the moment the definitions. And by the remark, E L semi ample. And therefore you can use Kiel's theorem here to show that L is semi ample global. So you see that as I told you this is something which happens only over finite field. Uh, but for the other quadratic dimensions, so if quadratic dimension is the same zero, this is not true anymore. <coughs> so if L is not numerical material and L is not big, then L may not be, may or may not be. So there are examples for, for instance, you can see an example of by Gurkutan, where he confirmed essentially an effective and nef cardio divider which cannot move. Any multiple of that cannot move, therefore it's not going to happen. And so if the L is not big or it's not numerically trivial, then Chiel's theorem doesn't tell you anything because it will be just an empty set. Okay, so we got some nice examples, and now let's go to more serious stuff. So the theorem on three points. Okay, suppose that X B is a pair of dimension three, defined again over S P. So if you don't like this extra divide of B, you can just maybe ignore it, but actually the proof, for the proof is quite important. Consider also divided, but you could just come from maybe just a smooth projective threefold over FP. And then now assume that L is equal to K X plus B plus some ample divide and start the with net. Yeah, where the A is ample, but maybe I have just have the Q device, not necessarily a line. So hopefully there is time I will tell you why we consider this kind of devices, but you have already seen in the previous lecture to show that to run the minimum of the program on surfaces, we consider this kind of divider, so it's also natural to then in this case, what we know is that, that L is a So the similar theorem for other kind of field, other positive directions of field, is actually not known. So in case now the direct order of SP or another complex numbers or something of positive zero, then we don't know whether this zero holds. But of course it is expected to hold. So actually something very nice about this theorem is that it actually even does not tell you what singularity does. It just doesn't care about the singularity. And also if you take a random left divide, an FMD divide the L on such a triple is again not doing this amount of force. Actually simple. So then it's, it's natural to consider this kind of a divide the useful part. So let's see how the approach works. So by assumption L is B. 
so I can say that L is um, maybe the sum multiple of this. Let's say M times L is linear to uh, something ample plus something effective. Just come from B because M times L minus G will have sections. Okay. Now, but the exceptional set of L is for trivial reasons that we have seen before is inside the support of it's inside the divided T. That's just because G is not. So if we want to apply G theorem, then it's enough to show that L restricted to in semi ample, but it will be even more than enough if you show L restricted to D in semi ample. So, it's enough to show that L restricted to D is semi ample. It's just because D contains this exceptional set. Okay, so let's see how we can show that this is semi ample. And this is where these uh, tricks, the techniques of the minimum model program come into the picture. And this is actually very similar to what, what I discussed in the previous lecture for surface. So let's take, let's take a decomposition. Let's write the D prime plus D double prime plus D triple sum that, uh, that if I restrict L to any component of restriction of L to any component of Z prime, but then respectively D double prime and respectively D triple has the following property. So if I take any component of D prime, L is just numerically trivial there. This is just an artificial composition of the any component, let's say S. Here I know that L restricted to S is numerically trivial, but for D double prime, L restricted to S is not numerically trivial, but also not. B, and finally L is S. So I just divided it into these three cases. And if you know a little more language of variational geometry, it just means numerical dimension zero, numerical dimension one, numerical dimension. Now, by the previous example, we see that L restricted to B prime and also L restricted to uh, B triple they are both going to help. So think of this if in this case you have just a numerically trivial divide or some some scheme as I told you this is always torsion, so it's always some ample. And here because L restricted to every component is B. And we are working on, on uh, the right of our finite field that these components are just surfaces, so you have to be done. But in this example, the x is irreducible, but you apply it to the same kind of argument. So we have some ampullets on these two parts. We only need to show some ampullets on the double part. And how to do this is more complicated. So let's fix the component. Double time, and then take alpha such that such that the coefficient of S inside the divide of B plus A plus alpha times G plus alpha times T is exactly one. So you see you see familiarity with the previous lecture is just the same trick. So let's call this divider here. Well, so 
So I have created a divisor and S is a component to be coefficient one. That's not a big deal. Now, the crucial thing is that on, on the normalization of this component S, we can write by the adjunction formula So I'm not going into the little detail, but to get the adjunction for no itself, we will need some work. Right? Because we are on three folds, this is not a big, big deal. So what we can write is, is Ks new plus some effective divisor, effective. <coughs> this can be said in the pullback of. So in other words, this is, for a moment, assume that S is already normal. Then I'm just saying that K plus delta restricted to S can be written in the form K plus some effective device. This is the so-called adjunction for me. And because we didn't say essentially anything about the singularity, the delta which you get on S might have very large coefficients. But actually, for, at least for this theorem, this doesn't solve any problem. Now, so the crucial thing is here is that this divider is, is effective and also it contains the ample divider. So I say that this guy contains the pullback of of A it actually also contains the pullback of alpha times G. But the crucial thing is that it, it is effective and contains something which is alpha. <coughs> and if you go on some resolution of resolution of, of this S of this normalization and if you apply the Riemann of theorem. So if you apply the Riemann of theorem, because this delta is already effective, it contains a divide, you apply Riemann of you get a lot of sections.
have a line bundle, and if you know even that frustration with these components are semi ample or even just just trivial or equal to the structure shape, it's very difficult to glue these things together to get semi ample in the whole in the whole thing. I mean, the simple example would be just to take two copies of P1 just a line and a conic inside P2 the intersecting this and if you take normalization you will get just two copies of P1. Now you can you can have a lot of line bundles restricted to each component trivial but it's not trivial on the whole variety. But all the finite fields somehow some special things have to do. let you do this kind of thing. Anyway so finally it means that L itself So I have that for very few minutes and I try to tell you how we apply this theorem in practice. Okay, so I again remind you of why we look at this kind of device and why we want it to be somehow. So again assume that so the proof of the theorem you can just assume that K is not the right and P or actually if you take any other algebraic closed field, and suppose that XB is a pair defined over this field. Or if you are not happy with pairs, just the smooth projective variety over this field. So as you know, in biological geometry, we try to make the canonical bundle public somehow, if it is not part of the story. So, assume that also the canonical bundle class B is not net. If it is net already, then it is what we call a minimum model and we are already fine. But if it is not net, we like to make it net or to get some other really nice structure, like modify the space. Okay, so this is not NIF, and then I can take an ample divisor. An ample, maybe Q divisor, let's say A plus that KX plus B plus A is NIF, but in a way I take the smallest possible, you know, if I remove a little more, then this is not. Anymore. So let me call this L, but L minus just a little bit of A is not left anymore. Okay, so suppose we already have all these things, these are more matter of combinatorics, and the only important thing is that you, you can take a Q divider, a Q ample divider, this I only count in. Electrify, let's also ignore this. This point, then we get an L of this form, this is exactly as in the field. And we like such L to be semi ample. So if L is semi ample, then by these properties, the semi ampleness will give you a non trivial form. get a non-trivial morphism from x to let's say x prime. <coughs> so in the case of surfaces in dimension two, if you remember, we had exactly the same kind of construction and the the x to x prime, for example if L is big in that case you just collapse some curves, maybe a few or maybe just one. If L is not big, if you remember we got the vibration what we call the modified state. And so this is precisely the same construction. It doesn't really matter in any language. But for threefold at least, we have some theory. So we can apply that. Now, with dimension of x3, and if we assume that L is big, so the bigness will be automatic if, if x has now negative for the dimension. Dimension of K, 
of k plus b is not negative. In other words, if some multiple of k in a section, then the pigment is just as much. And in fact, if you pick a random variety, this condition is such. So if L is big, it's also named by the theorem that it's semi ample, so you can get such a much bigger multiple. And so we get to so in this case, because L is big, you get a birational morphism which will collapse maybe in some divider or maybe a finite in a divider or maybe some divider plus some curves. But you can actually refine this a little bit so that what you can you contract is not always in control. It can be as small as possible. And then, as in the case of surfaces, then the idea is to continue with X prime. So I will not tell you what you should expect. Of course, you will have a difficulty. Not as simple as in the case of surfaces. But at least we have the the very first step of this whole project. And if K is not a representative of finite field, even this part is not known as I mentioned. You don't even know that you can actually do the first step. Okay, I think I will stop. Thank you. 